The latest SEC filing shows the firm increased its stake in Alibaba by 83% last quarter. Shares, though, of BABA, keep in mind, have tumbled to about 32% year-to-date due to regulatory threats in China. And so while others rushed for the exit, Munger doubled down in BABA with at least $40 million earlier this year, which isn't really the norm as he normally invests in American companies. So does that mean the Chinese market is on sale? Think about rebalancing to areas that have gone on sale. China has gone on sale. That despite regulatory risks and slow growth, China is just too big to ignore, and its stocks are too undervalued to pass up. The Munger family has invested in China sub substantially, and I did it because I respected the man who was going to do the investing, and it all looked inexpensive to me, and the companies looked very strong to me. And of course, this worked out. I've done way better than I had any right to expect. Does it still look that way when you look to the Chinese markets? I think that the best companies in China are cheaper than the best companies in the United States. The concern other investors might have before they, they follow in that way is that they don't know that much about Chinese companies and maybe... They're just generally afraid of China. Is there a reason that they may have some... I mean, you have people who are guiding you who understand China well. If someone was trying to do this on their own, would it be a little more dangerous? Sure, it really helps to understand the country you're operating in, <laughs> <laughs> of course. All right, there's my, that's a stupid question moment. Um, you would not necessarily advise others to do this, I guess is my point, for investors who are sitting at home watching. I don't think it would be all that hard for any smart person to find four or five great companies in China to invest in. You and your, your friend Li Lu have been very optimistic with respect to investing opportunities in China. BYD has performed spectacularly for Berkshire since its initial purchase in 2008 and is currently valued at $5.8 billion. The Daily Journal recently bought a large position in Alibaba after founder Jack Ma had been reprimanded by the Chinese Communist Party and Ma's other company, Ant, was not allowed to proceed with its IPO. What are your current thoughts on China and whether the communist leaders will allow businesses with strong leadership to flourish in decades to come? Well, I think that... Uh, that the Chinese government will allow businesses to flourish. It was a, one of the most remarkable things that ever happened in the history of the world when a bunch of committed communists just looked at the prosperity of places like Singapore and said, the hell with this, we're not going to stay here in poverty. We're going to copy what works. And they changed communism. They just accepted Adam Smith and added it to their communism. And they said, now we have communism with Chinese characteristics, which is China with a free market with a bunch of billionaires and so forth. And they made that shift. They deserve a lot of credit. Warren and I are not quite as good at that as changing our minds <laughs> in many cases. <laughs> yeah. and, and that was a remarkable change coming from such a place. And, of course, it's worked like gangbusters. It had this enormous growth in the average income of the average Chinese. They've lifted 800 million people out of poverty fast. And it, it, there was never anything like it in the history of the world. So my hat is off to the Chinese. And I think they will continue to allow people to make money. They've learned it works. The Chinese, I love what the guy said in the first place. I don't care whether the cat is black and white as long as it catches mice. That's my kind of talk. Mr. Munger is a champion of Chinese stocks. How concerned is he about Chinese government interference as seen recently with Ant Financial, Alibaba, and Mr. Jack Ma? What, for example, is to stop the Chinese government from simply deciding one day to nationalize BYD? Well, I consider that very unlikely. And I think Jack Ma was very arrogant to be telling the Chinese government how dumb they were and how stupid their policies were and so forth. Considering their system, that is not what he should have been doing. And, and uh, no, I don't, I don't, I don't think that, I, I think the Chinese have behaved very, very, shrewdly in managing their economy, and they've gotten better results than we have in managing our economy. And, and I think that that will probably continue. And sure, we all love the kind of civilization we have. I'm not saying I want to live in, in, in China. I prefer the United States. 
but I do admire what the Chinese have done. How can you not do it? Nobody else has ever taken a big country out of poverty so fast and so long. And what I see in China now just staggers staggers me. There are factories in China that are just absolutely full of robots and are working beautifully. They're no longer using peasant girls to beat the brains out of our little shoe companies in America. They are joining the modern world very rapidly and, and they're getting very skillful at, 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 at operating. GDP per capita in China was 600 in 1978. Uh, the year Deng Xiaoping took over, it was 300. Today, it hovers around 9,500. Never before in the history of mankind have we seen such a rapid eradication of poverty, pulling approximately 800 million people out of destitution. You are on record as a zealous fan of the Chinese work ethic and Confucian values system. As we can see from the deteriorating U.S. relationship with China, the Western world does not understand China. What can we do to increase knowledge, understanding, and appreciation of the Chinese civilization? Well, it's natural for people to think their own civilization and their own nation is better than everybody else. But everybody can't be better than everybody else. You're right. The, the, China's economic record among the big nations is the best that ever existed in the history of the world. And that's very interesting. A lot of people assume that since England led the Industrial Revolution and always and had free speech early, that, uh, that free speech is required to have a booming economy as prescribed by Adam Smith. But the Chinese have proved you don't need free speech to have a wonderful economy. They just copied Adam Smith and left out the free speech and it worked fine for them. As a matter of fact, it's not clear to me that China would have done better if they'd copied every aspect of English civilization. I think they would have come out worse because their position was so dire and the poverty was so extreme, they needed very extreme methods, totalitarian methods, if you will, to get out of the fix they, they were in. So I think what China has done was probably right for China and that we shouldn't be so pompous as to be telling the Chinese they ought to behave like us because, they like our, because we like ourselves and our system. It's entirely possible that our system is right for us and their system is right for them.